guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is episode 5, I think, of my bikini prep vlog series. I'm on my 6th week of prep, I want to say, and I actually had a really hard last couple of weeks, and I'm going to talk about that. Um, so, I started my prep, my macros were not drastically different from when I was not on prep in my off-season, but the consistency made a big difference, and I was down 5 pounds, and I felt really good, and then the week before last, I was dog sitting outside of my house. I had so much work to do between college and my training school and my actual job and then not being home and my body just couldn't handle it and my weight started actually going up and it was like I felt like shit. I was getting really upset and talking to my coach and trying to figure it out and we kind of just decided to give it a few days and then I gave it a few days and nothing really happened. My weight was up like two pounds and one pound and another pound. I, I don't know. I, in total, I only ended up being up one pound at my weigh-in from the week before. And then I left for Vegas. I'm in Vegas right now. And I did get my monthly gift the day I was leaving. As always, I get it. Every time I go on vacation, I'll get it. It's great. Um, so I think that was probably half the reason why I was feeling that way and why my weight was going up. But I don't have a scale here, so I haven't been to weigh myself, which is good because I can just kind of relax and hopefully... My stress levels will go down, my weight will go down, and by the time I get home, I'm hoping things are okay. Um, I have been quite bloated while I'm here, though, because I've been eating Icon meals, and they have a lot of sodium in them, because anytime you get something that's, like, frozen or anything, like a pre-made meal, it's gonna have to have a lot of sodium in it to preserve the freshness. So, yeah, I'm just taking it day by day. I'm feeling okay. Um, so we'll see what my, weight, what my weight is when I get home. And weight isn't the most important thing, but... Like, if my weight's up but I feel amazing, then I don't give a shit about my weight. But if my weight's up in correlation with me feeling, like, heavy and crappy, then I get upset. Um, that's the only time I care about the number. If, you're, if your weight is up but you feel, like, lean and awesome, then you're killing it. Who cares? Um, but anyway, like I said, I'm in Vegas right now. I was going to film a travel blog, but there's so many travel blogs out there. I don't think I have any other tips that any other, anyone else hasn't given to the YouTube world. Um, Icon meals are awesome. Deliver it to your hotel. Stay on track the entire vacation without stressing. I highly recommend Icon meals or whatever meal prep service you want. And honestly, it's it's you'll save money by doing it because at least here in Vegas, a meal, if I went downstairs and got a meal six times a day, it would cost me like $200 a day probably. Not really. Maybe like $100 a day. Yeah. Food's really expensive when you're out, especially in like a, a city or something like that. So for $7 for an Icon meal and then $40 shipping, if you order like 20 meals, it's $9 a meal. Killing it. Um, so anyway, this video is actually going to be about my journey to where I am today and how I started in the health and fitness world and competing and all that stuff. Um, so, one sec. This is Cyvation Blue Raspberry. It's really good. Um... <coughs> So, I'm going to be 21 next month on May 24th. Um, so, I'm 20 right now, and my fitness journey started when I was 15. So, more like, yeah, 14 or 15. Um, I was always really in shape and healthy as a kid. I was always playing sports. My mom raised us very healthy. Like, if we wanted sugar cereal, that was a Christmas gift because that wasn't allowed in the house. But when I went out with friends and stuff like that, I would just eat whatever, you know, like normal teenager stuff, pizza, ice cream, all that good stuff. Um, and I wasn't overweight or heavy by any means, but I just didn't look the way I wanted to look. Um, I wanted to get really in shape. So I started going on a run every day and trying to just eat healthier foods. I had no idea about portion control or anything like that at that point. I would come home and make a bowl like this big of ice cream, not ice cream, <laughs> yogurt, like the regular vanilla yogurt that has a lot of sugar in it, like this much granola cereal, which is like a calorie bomb and strawberries, and I don't eat that and go on a run, but it ended up helping me lose weight because I was still eating less than what I had been before. So I started just making healthier choices or what I thought was healthier choices and going on a run every day. And after like a month of that, I was losing a little bit of weight and I felt really good. Then I started watching my portions and like weighing stuff, not like measuring cups. I didn't have a scale or anything like that. Um, but I just took more note of my portion sizes and that's when I started to really lose weight. So I started at 138 pounds. I was probably 5'8 
back then. I'm 5'10 now. 5'8, um, 138 pounds, no muscle. So I was not heavy, but I was not lean. I was just kind of like an average body, no muscle, soft. Um, by the end of that, I was 117 pounds. Um, so originally I lost 10 pounds. And I remember that summer after I lost that 10 pounds, people noticed that I looked great. And everybody said, you know, you look you look so good, oh my god, what'd you do? And I felt amazing that summer because my weight was like where it should be. I looked healthy, I was happy. And then going into that year, my sophomore year of high school, I continued to cut my calories and lose weight. And that's when I developed an eating disorder. And I was just a completely different person. I was a size double zero, like literally a skeleton. If I tried to put on some of my clothes that I wore back then, it would not even probably come up to like my knee. I was so small. Um, I went the entire year without having my period, which is like a red flag that something is wrong. Um, I was taking supplements because I had anemia, because my blood, I wasn't ever eating, like I wasn't eating that much, so I didn't have any iron in my system or B vitamins, so I was just totally off and I felt like crap all the time, but I was just so consumed in it because eating disorders, <clears throat> a lot of people give them shit because they don't think it's a real disorder, but it's a mental disorder just like anything else and you really don't have control over it and once it kind of gets in your head, you can't get it out. Um, so And it's hard in high school and people see you like stick thin, they're just, like people give you shit for everything in high school, so it was really hard to be kind of made fun of by the other girls and I like didn't have any friends I just had my boyfriend and it was really hard um, my parents never said anything uh, nobody really told me that I had to change something I just kinda got crap for it and I felt really alone at that time um, that went on for an entire year then I remember I remember going to a field hockey tournament and my coach who I had freshman year saw me sophomore year and was like, what is wrong with you? Like, you need an energy bar, you need to eat, like, how are you going to perform like this? And that kind of stuck to me, I'm like, crap, like, what am I doing? And I stopped playing field hockey after that year because I didn't make varsity, probably because I was so emaciated and I had, my freshman year I was like the top player, set records for school, goal scoring, and then sophomore year I just couldn't perform because I wasn't eating anything. Um, so then going to junior year, I kind of realized like, you know, I need to change something. Like I don't look healthy, I don't feel good. And so this was all on my own. So I started gradually increasing calories, not gradually, but you know, here and there I'd add a little bit more calories and I started going out more with friends and drinking and I gained like a good 10 pounds and I looked healthy and I looked healthy and I felt healthy and I wasn't really upset on my weight at all, I felt good. Um, then going to senior year, I started taking kickboxing classes and prior to these kickboxing classes I never even thought about lifting weights or having muscle or anything. I looked up to like the Victoria's Secret models like so many other people do and like being skinny was the goal. Um, then I go to this kickboxing class and my instructor is this jacked awesome looking woman and I just wanted to look like her and I'm like okay I need to start lifting weights. So I just do like you know like bicep curls and little things like that. In my basement, nothing too drastic. Like I wasn't, I had no idea what I was doing. Um, still running a lot, still doing a lot of cardio. So I wasn't gonna make any muscular gains when I was like doing an hour of cardio a day and then some bicep curls. So that was senior year, and then um, that summer I went to Penn State to start college, and I was in a program to become a personal trainer there. So I literally learned everything about lifting weights. Um, so I started using workout programs and doing like bodybuilding type programs and I just fell in love with it. At that point I was a vegetarian actually. I went through a 10 month phase of being a vegetarian. So the beginning of my freshman year I was trying to gain muscle, not really eating anything. Then I started getting more into my fitness pal. I always use my fitness pal but just for the total, total caloric intake and not the actual macros. And then one day I look at my protein and I'm like I'm only eating like 50 grams of protein a day. Then I started eating more egg whites and protein shakes and things like that. And then by the second semester, I'm like, screw this, I need meat in my life to gain muscle. Um, also, second semester, I moved in with my best friend Alexa, and that's when we started talking about competing. I didn't really know what competing was. I always saw the pictures on Instagram and stuff of the sparkly bikinis, and I'm like, oh, that's cool. Like, are they models? Like, what is that? And then Alexa started talking about it with me, and I'm like, I want to do that. And she wasn't going to do a show, but then she ended up doing it. 
and we were both prepping our second semester of freshman year of college in our dorm rooms. Bless our souls for doing that. We were literally prepping. I didn't. I did my first show without a kitchen, just a microwave and a refrigerator. So if you, if I can do that, if I can prep like that way, then you can. You no excuses. <laughs> literally, I'll be like walking all over campus trying to find the foods and like going to the dining hall and like hoarding eggs and things like that. It was nuts. Um, but it worked and I like never slipped up and it was awesome. Um, so if you can prep in a dorm room, then you can do anything. I forgot about that. As I'm in a hotel staying on track. Like there's no excuses. If you really want something, you're going to get it. Um, so as I was saying, then we did, I prepped that year, did my first show in July. I placed, I did NPC. I really liked it. And I was super excited. Then that following year, I actually have an entire video on that following year, which was the time I gained 30 pounds. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about that, but I gained 30 pounds. Then last summer I competed in a show. It was torture, that competition prep, because I was only doing it for the reason of losing weight, and I wasn't excited about the show or anything like that. It was just an end goal, and I said, the only way I'm going to lose weight is if I do a show because I know that's how I'm going to stay on track. And it worked. I hated the show and the experience, but it worked. And I didn't gain weight afterwards because I did a reverse diet, which I also have a video on. Um, so we did my reverse diet after that, which brings me to where I am now. So I did a reverse diet for like six months. Then I just started prepping for a show that's also this July. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my story in one really sum summarized video about how I got into fitness and all that stuff. And um, moving forward, I... I'm going to compete this summer and see how I feel about it because I've never been too excited about the actual show. I love prepping for shows, but then I get to the actual show and it's it's a long day and it's not fun, I don't think. Everybody's so stressed. It's just, once you place, it's fun, but up until then, it's kind of like the most stressful day of your life. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to be prepping because I'm having a lot of fun prepping and eating different foods and challenging myself and seeing, you know, what can I fit? How can I do this? So that's been really fun and I'm having a lot of fun making the YouTube channel to go with my prep. So I just want to add another side note about like whether or not you should do a show. If you start prep and you're miserable, don't, don't do it because you're going to hate it and you're, it's not going to be good for your health or your body. You need to be 110% committed to doing a show and to being involved in the process or otherwise it's going to be miserable. You know, if you don't like, if you don't like the workouts you're doing, if you don't like the food you're eating, if you don't like anything, then don't do it because nobody's making you do it. <laughs> I think a lot of people have that m misconception about prep. It's like, oh, my coach made me do this. I'm like, your coach didn't make you do anything. Like, okay, he's going to tell you to cut your calories because that's what you're going to have to do to get to where you want to be. It's your choice. So if you don't want to do it, then don't do it. If you're going to complain about your carbs being cut, your car amount of cardio, all that shit, then don't compete. Nobody's making you. So that's my little rant about competing. It's totally your choice. Nobody's making you do it. People like your family and friends probably want you not to do it, honestly, because prep makes us psycho and hungry and hangry and they don't want to deal with that. So nobody cares if you do it except for you. So but you're not 110% into it, then don't do it. That is all I have to say about that because the last two shows I did, I was miserable during the process. Not the first one. The second one, I was miserable during the process and I, I said I was never going to compete again after that show. But now that I'm excited about it and like enjoying the process, it's totally different. So you need to do it 100% for you and only you because nobody else cares. So my battery got exhausted and couldn't finish recording my other video. I hate how it says exhausted. I'm like, wake up, come on. <laughs> I'm so funny. So anyway, um, I just tried to go to the gym. It's 8 o'clock here in Vegas. And I get down there at 7.50 and I'm feeling like the bomb because I wasn't going to work out today. And I got like... A surge of energy and I'm super excited to work out and I get there and it's empty obviously because people are doing other disgusting stuff and it closes at 8 o'clock like I know that I'm in Vegas and that people are gambling and drinking and stuff but like 8 o'clock what about like the people who want to work out at 8 o'clock at night or people who are traveling all day and want to work out and like hello that's bullshit like really other hotel gyms are open 24 hours as far as I know so I go in there thinking it's gonna be open till like 11 at least and the girl's like, oh, we close at 8. And I'm like, uh-huh. I got three sets of squats in. Then had to leave. What? But anyway, this wraps up my video. A lot of ranting done. Um, screw Vegas. Screw this gym here at the Bellagio. And, yeah. I'm gonna go walk the strip, I guess, and eat salad and buy water. <laughs> Bye!
I'm so obnoxious. Like my video and subscribe.